So I'm back up here again. Well, so this is the uh, actual paper that I wrote uh, with the help of Maggie, who isn't here. She's on a cruise boat someplace. It's very difficult, but uh, she's very helpful. So this was a paper that we put out, um, <clears throat> that I put out a week and a half ago that we published, got some media attention, which was great. Um, and it examines what's called uh, tax expenditures, uh, which is a nice way of saying tax loopholes. Um, it was called Out of the Shadows, Shining a Light on Canada's Unequal Distribution of Federal Tax Expenditures. Um, <clears throat> now, so what is a tax expenditure? Well, here's a variety of things you might know tax expenditures as. Tax loopholes, tax credits, tax deductions, reductions in taxable income, non-taxation of income, partial inclusion of income, and so on and so forth. Um, some of the speakers before have talked about illegal ways to avoid paying tax. These are legal ways to avoid paying tax. There are forms to be filled out. They are completely legal in every way. There's no gray line here whatsoever, no abuse needed whatsoever. These are written into the tax codes and they are exemptions to the basic progressive income tax system that we have in Canada. That basic system, uh, which is pretty common across most of the developed world, is that as you make more, you pay more and you pay more at a higher rate above certain thresholds or brackets. Um, <clears throat> now, the, the purpose of this paper um, was to look at these tax expenditures. To, you know, might need this, this is a fitness tax credit, for instance. RRSPs are a tax exemption. Uh, registered pension plans are an exemption. The uh, partial inclusion of capital gains, the exemption of the sale of capital gains in your principal residence. These are all exemptions to the tax code. And so what this study was meant to do was to look at who benefits from these expenditures. So is it the rich, is it the poor, is it the middle class across the income spectrum? Who are the primary beneficiaries individually of these on a personal tax exemptions? <coughs> but also, if we look at tax exemptions as a system that's built into our tax system, which way does it push? Does it push towards greater equality, less equality? Does it make no difference whatsoever? And so this answer, the answer to this question, intuitively, I thought, was that Income would go towards the wealthy. That, wasn't, you know, that wouldn't be a shocking conclusion. But despite the importance of this type of vertical inequality analysis, um, this has never been done before. So we have 64 personal income tax, tax exemptions that we have never studied in this way to see who benefits from them. Um, there have been several individual ad hoc analyses. So I did an analysis on pension incomes, or no, sorry, not pension incomes, but family income splitting. Um, that, that resulted directly in the capping of family income splitting a couple of years ago. And it was driven by this type of analysis, the inequality analysis of, of, a, of a tax expenditure. So I think it's important to put the, you know, how important are tax expenditures in the grand scheme of things? Well, so this is the value of personal tax, exp tax expenditures in 2011, $103 billion. We collected in federal personal income taxes $121 billion in that same year. Which is to say that for every dollar that we collect, we give a dollar away in tax expenditures. Just to give you some idea of the scale of what we're talking about here. Another way to look at it is to say, what is the entirety of all federal transfers, every single one across every type of check that we send to any Canadian, including the Canada Pension Plan, Old Age Security, the Guaranteed Income Supplement, Employment Insurance, the GST credit, and all of the child benefits, the UCCB, the NCBS, and CCTB, which have now been changed into the Canada Child Benefit. These are roughly the same amount. So we are giving away as much in tax expenditures as we're sending out in all federal transfers. So this is an enormous expenditure that the federal government engaged in every year. I pulled these directly from the latest fiscal update. You'd see something similar in a federal budget, for instance. It is the aggregate <coughs> sort of expenditure and revenue categories of the major programs that we see in Canada. Elderly benefits, EI benefits, child benefits, the Canada Health Transfer for the provinces, the Canada Social Transfer to the provinces. Can anyone up here see a line that says $103 billion for federal tax expenditures? It's not here, and it's not here. In fact, federal tax expenditures appear nowhere in any federal budget, 
and nowhere in any fiscal update of any kind. The biggest program expenditure that we have on any of these is transfers to elderly at $45 billion. Uh, uh, and tax expenditures are twice that amount. And you will see it in none, in none of these documents. It appears nowhere. So what does tax expenditures look like as a system? If we take all these 64, which I did individually, 64, one by one, you can look up each one individually. If you want to know the distribution of the capital gains exemption, you want distribution of the fitness tax credit, it's all in there. Um, what is the distribution of benefits? So this is, a, this is a graph where you've got this decile graph. So each one of these groups has 10% of all Canadian filers over the age of 18. This is the income ranges for the first decile. This is what people make, zero to $4,000 in total pre-tax income. Median income here in Canada is right here at about $30,000. Half the population makes less, half the population makes more than $30,000. In orange, is the federal transfers, all federal transfers, EI, GIS, OAS, the GST credit, uh, the child benefits. In orange is the distribution of benefits, and this is the average benefit for each decile in dollars per person. So you can see actually in the lowest benefit that there actually is not a lot of federal transfers. Most of this is actually the child transfers, particularly for single parent families, mostly single mother families. And you see that it peaks in about the fourth decile. This is almost all elderly benefits, so this is the Canada um, pension plan and old age security and the guaranteed income supplement, you know, and this is roughly where you'd get with the sum of those. But you can see even at the very top end, you know, there are some benefit from transfer programs, right? You can see there's a bit of orange there in the top decile. Now look at tax expenditures. Remember, these are worth the same amount of money, right? Tax expenditures concentrate $15,000 a person for people making over $84,000 a year. And they result in, you can't see it here, but it's $130 a person here. In fact, transfers here equal are 15 times less than what tax expenditures are for the, uh, the richest decile. So we think of having a transfer system, and indeed we do. We have one transfer system that we know very well, and we have a second shadow transfer system called tax expenditures. And this is the first time you will have ever seen this graph, because it's the first time anyone's ever done this graph except that it's one of the biggest expenditures that we have in Canada at the federal level. So this is, now, now not all tax expenditures are regressive. This is the five most progressive tax expenditures. Um, they are in fact the only five tax expenditures out of 64 that result in more benefit going to the bottom half of the population than going to the top half of the population. 59 out of the 64 provide more benefit to the top half of the population. Uh, and you can see that the working income tax benefit is actually not quite a tax expenditure, although it appears in this list it's more of an income transfer. In any event, it is the most expensive of this list, at about a billion dollars. Uh, and then you can see non-taxation of guaranteed income supplement, which is a transfer for low-income Canadians, non-taxation of social assistance, uh, and these are related to medical expenses. Um, each one of these has sort of a relatively, you know, the distribution you can see sort of across the income spectrum, although it's concentrated sort of here in the middle lower class, uh, sorry, uh, income, middle income, sort of lower middle income. And each one of those actually all have a functional limit. So there is a maximum amount that you can get from uh, the, the working income tax benefit or the WIPI, uh, which is uh, $944. Uh, and there's a the maximum amount that you can get from the uh, refundable medical expense supplement. It's $1,089. Now, let's compare that to the five most regressive tax expenditures. This is their distribution. As you can see, the cheapest of them is worth $740 million a year. This is a year. Uh, and none of them have a functional limit, except pension income splitting. And the limit for pension income splitting uh, is about uh, just under $11,000 a person. The other four have no functional limit. There is no limit to how much you can benefit from the dividend gross up, which is a tax, you know, if you're paid in dividends, you get a tax break on that. And you can see that the distribution is horrible, right? In fact, all of these five provide at least 99% of their benefit to the top decile, at least, if not higher than 99%. Uh, and the most expensive, the dividend gross up here, costs $4 billion a year. So from a vertical inequality perspective, which is to say compared, comparing sort of families up and down the income spectrum, 
tax expenditures are a total disaster. Um, how am I doing on time? Probably wait. <coughs> oh, great. Um, so one of the things I think that's really interesting is, that, I mean, they're called tax expenditures. So they're called expenditures for a reason. This is money that we are spending every year. We're spending $100 billion every year on these things. Now, these are very rarely examined. This is the first time there's ever been an income distribution study of all 64 personal. We've still got GST tax expenditures, and we also have corporate tax expenditures, which I haven't looked at. Maybe that's for something in the future. But just just give you some idea of what this money could buy if we decided not to spend it on wealthy households, uh, you know, the minutia of their taxes. With $9 billion, we could completely eliminate seniors' poverty in this country. We could raise every single senior up to 21800 which is the international limb line. Uh, and that would be worth about two of the five on the previous slide. <coughs> Oops, sorry. Right, so you could sort of get nine. Well, you'd probably get three or four here. But anyway, I mean, with, with, these, with these five, um, you could easily pay for the elimination of seniors' poverty. So every year we decide we do not want to eliminate seniors' poverty. What we do want to do is continue with these tax expenditures that provide at least 99% of their benefit to the top decile. That is a choice we're making every year, fiscal choice. Um, we could double the long-term number of long-term care beds in this country uh, and eliminate waiting lines for long-term care beds. We could eliminate university tuition for one of these tax credits. The dividend gross up would eliminate university tuition. And so we're deciding every year to not eliminate university tuition and instead continue with the dividend gross up. And so I did a paper a little earlier on this year where I looked at basic incomes in Canada, which is a very controversial topic. Uh, in any event, um, I calculated how much it would cost to lift everybody in the country up to the limb line of 21.6, uh, and it'd be worth, with a 50% clawback on income, it'd be worth about $89 billion, a significant expenditure. And so at the time, I thought, you know, this is a really big number, it's kind of ridiculous, like no one's going to go for this, right? And then you turn around and look and see how much money do we shoot out the door every year to Canada's wealthiest Canadians. Uh, and the answer is $103 billion. So this is doable. It'd require a change in the tax system, obviously. But for every dollar, or we could double the amount of income taxes we collect if we closed all the personal income tax, tax expenditures. So I'll leave it at that. This all comes from the, the report that we published. There's tons more detail in there. Uh, and I look forward to the questions at the end.